Hey, this is uh, Chris McGillicut Park again, and uh, it's time to finally uh, actually do an update on um, showing how to split apart an XML mod uh, that is going to be shared. So, uh, in, in, it's going to work in the new framework. So um, I'm picking AMU actually. Uh, to work with because this is a mod that has its entire code base included in the um, in the distributed version of the game, which is uh, very kind of Sir Limbo to do. Um, it makes it for a really great uh, learning resource. You can just copy the AMU code base and strip out um, anything that's AMU specific, but keep kind of the shell of it, rename it. Uh, to something that's whatever it is you're going to do and not have to worry about like the folder structure and, and all that sort of stuff. So, okay, if I'm opening up AMU right now, which I'm not going to yet, uh, well, okay, fine, I'm going to. If I open it up right now, it's got one DLL. This has not been updated at all. I mean, it's very up to date with his own logic, but it hasn't been ported to the new format. So this video is for modders who are wanting to do this. And we already have like a bunch of errors going on here uh, because actually we have very few errors, but there are many hidden errors that you can't see because right now it's complaining about classes it can't find uh, or interfaces in this case, because those no longer exist. They've been renamed or repurposed or something else has happened to it. And, um, so there's actually a bunch of errors in here that uh, that we're going to need to take care of, but we can't yet. Uh, we need to do something else first. And so um, there's... All right, so we've got a bunch of... Uh, that's a bunch of new stuff. Um, that's his new smart faction implementation base. That's cool. Um, and all the game commands and the personal notification generator. That's great. I don't see, oh, okay, there it is. The executor fake faction, yep. Okay, so. Mm. Oh my. Um, Well, I can port this over. Um, this may be not as instructive as uh, one, one would hope, just because this is kind of different. But uh, in some ways, the differences will make it uh, useful. I am not going to just sit here and type while you listen to me and watch me do a bunch of replacements. I'm going to liberally pause. So. Um, let me make sure that uh, you see my mouse cursor too. Um, yeah, good. Um, okay, so first thing we're gonna do, okay, so kind of taking stock of the land. So what do we need to do overall? First of all, we're gonna need two DLLs and I, I think, in this particular case, because AMU is used by, by so many other things, um, it would be wise of me to keep calling AMU, AMU. That's why I did not change uh, the name of the external, uh, Arkin external AI War 2 bit data, whatever the heck that mod uh, motto. It's called, <laughs> my memory is so terrible with something like that. Uh, I remember many, many things, but uh, many other things I don't. Arc and ex AI War External Code. Um, I kept that name the same because a lot of other things depend on it. And then I just made a secondary thing, AI War External Deep Processing Code. Um, if, you're, if your mod is an end stage mod that nobody else is depending on, like, like Devour Chrysalis, it depends on itself and it depends on AMU. Uh, 
then you could rename that and have devour chrysalis base info, devour chrysalis deep info. That's probably not a bad idea. And Mew, even though it's going to hurt clarity a little bit, it will help with um, future proofing that uh, I'm going to call it leave it with base being just AMU because uh, that's what most things are going to be referencing. And then we're going to have AMU deep info. So um, we are going to edit this via XML because if you try and set this up uh, with code by hand, that is a nightmare. So, or, or not code by hand. If you try and set this up uh, through the interface of Visual Studio, it's real pain in the rear. I don't want to do that. So we're going to make AMU, um, and we're just going to call it AMU Deep Info. Right now, this is just a copy of the existing one. Now we've got two projects in a single folder, which is problematic. Uh, will it even let me do that? I don't even know. I haven't tried that in a long time. Um, we'll find out. I'll either need to move it into a subfolder or I won't. Um, so I usually like to use Notepad++ just because it gives a little bit of format highlighting, but it doesn't do any auto formatting or any of this stuff Visual Studio might do. So we're going to look at the solution here first. Our solution has, right now, one project called AMU. Now it is going to have AMU Deep Info as well. Uh, AMU Deep Info will be the second one in it because that makes the most sense. We're going to edit the AMU CS Proj as well. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here. So what are you going to change? So we're going to look first the nice thing about this also is the highlighting of stuff. So uh, our root namespace doesn't really matter, but we'll make it AMU Deep Info. Assembly name, that matters. That'll be AMU Deep Info. Uh, it has a bunch of references to things. It's got what it's going to compile. And... Um, we're going to need to add another reference here um, to AMU itself, the main AMU, I mean. And that is located one folder down and in Modable Logic DLL. So we're going to be going down all right, so reliable DLL storage is down four from here. So uh, one, two, three. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So we're going to actually go down two. Where am I? Right here. We're going to go down two modable logic DLLs, amu.dll. If I mess that up, it's really, really easy to fix in a bit. Um, we can give this thing a different project GUID. Um, that's a bad way to do it. Um, just put in three different random numbers. Um, let's try opening the solution and see what happens. It's probably not going to be very happy. Okay. So now we see these two things that both share the same uh, source folder. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to actually have any problems with having two projects in the same folder. That's nice. So what I'm going to do, though, uh, what has changed? Oh, it's got two references to that. All right, we're not going to save that. Uh, did I not save this? What did I not do? External... Ah, that's what I didn't do. Include amu dot amu from where uh, that spot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder here. In this particular case, I'm just going to call it source deep info. And now
depends on how much history you want to keep of your um, of your uh, source control. I'm going to check this in now. Um, working on AMU per video. And um, the reason I'm checking this in now, because, I mean, why the heck did I just check that in? It's like nothing. Why, why bother checking that in? It's because I want the history to move. So more of the interesting information, I think, is going to be in deep info than is going to be in base. So I'm going to take these two things. I can't do it from here. I'm going to go into Tortoise SVN, and I'm going to go into the repo browser, which means repository browser. And it's going to pull that up. Now it's going to see the fact that I've got source and source deep info. I'm going to move these two things uh, into source deep info. Another move for AMU per video. Okay. And then now you'll notice nothing happened here. What the heck? Uh, we're not seeing the new stuff. So you have to hit SVN update. You can do it anywhere in the tree north of this. All righty, nifty. We moved a couple of things. Now it's time in AMU deep info to go source deep info. Um, <laughs> smart and the executor, none of these. None of these. Uh, I could also edit the other one, but I don't really need to. Um, I'll show you why. So I'm going to open the solution again. Error occurred. That's right, it did. <laughs> uh, I can't find these files. I just don't understand why. It's because I deleted them. Go ahead and uh, remove them this way uh control shift s to save everything which is handy and um we're never going to be able to compile amu deep info until we've got amu itself uh you can see that i did correctly get the path to it here so it is looking at whatever the file structure is and then amu modable logic dll's amu.dll now some people, including Sir Limbo, like to have a project-to-project -project linkage. And that may be okay. I don't know. Um, my experience with it has been that I don't trust Microsoft, basically. Uh, I think that a lot of times when you do a project-to-project -project link, like have this project reference this project specifically, you're trusting that their cache is never out of date, that uh, when something is updated, it's exactly what is needed happens. I don't trust that. They've burned me too many times where something has been out of date. So I don't trust them. So I don't do that. So I instead have this depend on the DLL that exists for use in the mod. Um, Right now, this is freaking out less because uh, I haven't um, completely split things yet. So uh, I, I haven't like, I think if I try and rebuild this, it'll probably delete the original and uh, we'll have some, some minor trouble. But let's go ahead. Our first job is to get uh, core to compile at all. And really that means anything in deep info we don't care about. So right now. So it depends on how you want to see your errors. I'm going to unload this project for now because I don't want to see errors from it. They're not actionable. Now that has some consequences for when I want to do a global search and replace. So I may undo that a bit. But the nice thing is you can load and unload projects. And this is part of why. Uh, Microsoft does make nice stuff. <laughs> All right, so we've got data structured. Oh my God, there's a long file. There's a lot of stuff in here. What is all this? I don't know. All right, so we've got a drawing bag base. Okay, cool. Uh, containers. Um, G 
gee, man. Um, uh, all right, well, we've got some errors in some places and not some errors in others. Arc in sim context is an error at the moment. Uh, is that really true? Is there not a sim context anymore? Um, I still had that. Maybe I don't. Oh, yeah, I took it out on purpose. Man, it's been a long three weeks, I tell you. Um, all right, so arc in sim context. That doesn't exist anymore. Why does that not exist anymore? Um, I broke it on purpose. You're welcome. <laughs> um what is a sim context so a sim context has some information about it uh like uh what thread it is um there's a few like worker things on it it's got a random on there random number generator on there and so forth now here's a problem when you have some code that's host only and you have some code this run client and host, and you uh, run the host only code code in the middle. You introduce the desync. So let's 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 look at it this way. So let's say that the random numbers that you get out are going to be like this. Okay, wow, well, I'm getting not very random numbers there. So let's say that these are the uh, random numbers that you get out in sequence here. Okay, so if you are on the client and host and you pull from the random number generator and it gives you these in order, then you deterministically know the client and the host are gonna do the same thing. If in the middle you have a piece of logic that says, oh, oh, if you the host, do this please. And the host then just does this. The host now pulls these out. And then when it comes back to client and host, the host will be on this number and it'll deterministically work, but the client's experience will instead be this. So we now have a desync from very innocent looking code. I hope this is illustrative enough. The client, and, uh, the client will do just this. The host or single player will do this. And so as soon as we come out of the host only stuff, the client is immediately in a state of desync. Uh, that can be hard to wrap your mind around. And I was having trouble wrapping my mind around how to deal with that. Normally, I like things along the lines of the using statement, where you would say something like this, where you would say something like, oh, we're going to do some host stuff for a little bit, just so you know. So we're going to say using host stuff, um, host, and then in here, you know, do some host things. But how much host stuff is that? Are we calling into methods? In those methods that we call, do those methods call methods? Um, how can they possibly know that the context has changed? Uh, so that's where I got to thinking about the nature of the context in general. What is a context? Well, the context is this using statement. We are passing our context around and saying, use this random number generator in this method. It doesn't matter where it came from. Okay? And so uh, that concept needed to die so that uh, we could solve this problem concurrently. What we now have, instead of a single context, is we have a client and host client and host context. And inside that, that's got a random number generator. Okay, cool. And inside that, not the random number generator, but inside the client and host itself, it also has a host only. And inside that, it also has a random number generator that's just for it. So now we can have a client and host type of context that gets passed around. When we hit a host only section of code, we can force it to pass in the host only subcontext, which is of a type that also is used out here. At that point, any methods that the host only section uses will use this random number generator. And when we come out, well, we just pass that into a method. So it's like the using thing. We're back to the random number generator from here. So we just continue on the same 
on the client and host. So essentially, this will happen on the client and the host. This will happen on the host as an aside to what's going on, but using a sub random number generator. I hope that that was clear. So this is new semantics in service of multiplayer. I intentionally broke all references to arc and sim context as a core concept because we need to differentiate now. Is this for the host only? Is this for anybody? What is this? These are very central methods, I can tell. This is some sort of draw bag, and we're pulling some stuff out of that. That is not inherently anything. So when that is the case, we're going to need to use uh, Arkin Sim Context Any Status. This is the most permissive you can possibly be. Do not be this permissive normally. When you can be more restrictive, do so. But if you've got a helper class, like what we're looking at here that Sir Lembo has created, be as permissive as possible because you want. If, if we made this a, um, a uh, host-only sort of drawing bag base, why? Why would we do that? That's, I don't see any purpose behind that. So, okay. Now what do we have? Draw max cost. This is still on this same class, I think. This is on entity type cost combo. I don't know what that is. This looks like a this we're in our data structures mes, method though. Sir Limbo may feel differently and may make changes diff, to, to based on what I've done, but uh, to me, looking at this, this looks like something that should be uh, able to be run anywhere. Spawn targeted, spawn ships targeted, then fill. This is perfect. Wow, I couldn't have asked for a better setup. Okay, great. So at this point, <laughs> uh, all right, there's a couple of levels here. Uh, spawn ships targeted, then fill. Oh man, this is nice. Okay, so we've got an outer met method here. This is giving some information about budgets and stuff. Now, there are two ways I could handle this. I'm going to tell you the way I'm not going to do it, and I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. So the way I'm not going to do it is that I could set this up as being an any status. And then we have a host or client is able to call this. We do our budgetary work. We don't actually spawn any ships. Does that make sense? Now, the problem with that is that almost assuredly, any sort of logic that's even thinking about spawning some ships is probably host only. And that's probably fine. It's probably on the faction. And uh, the client will find out about these budget changes pretty soon. Whatever this faction is, it's not a player faction, so the player doesn't have an interface to it really directly. And um, by the time the player can get their mouse to a tooltip to see something, it's going to be updated. So we may as well just wait for the host to tell us, I would say. So that said, um, if this was something we felt strongly or he felt strongly should be run on the client and the host except for the actual spawning bit Then what we would do is say any context here and then we would uh, Let's say uh, maybe this method um, Why not do it that way why not because you, here's the thing. Sometimes when we're building a wave, we, we want to say something like, if we were to build a wave, which I'm thinking about, then what would it look like if I were to pass it in right now? And we want to be able to predict that on the client and the host and be able to get the same result. So in that sort of standpoint, we would want to pass in on any status. And then for anything that's actually doing spawning or that's involving random number usage around a spawn, we gate that off, but uh, and, and that goes back to my example I was given before. 
I think this will be the most illustrative way to do it. I don't think it's actually necessary in this case. I strongly doubt it. But uh, I'm going to do it the harder way just to show you. So, um, <clears throat> and it's not going to hurt anything. So, um, these are angry, you know, because it wants a sim context, which, what is that anyway? Uh, so, in here, okay, so we've got some budget stuff going on and blah, blah, blah. Can spend both, try spawn and set new target. Here we're drawing from a draw bag. Um, and then it's breaking if if you can't afford any more the budget what draws down the budget um <laughs> so let's pretend for the sake of our example here that and and by all means by uh, you know this could be actually how it's used. So I'm making this in the most flexible possible way, even though I don't think it's really warranted. May as well. Why not? Spawn ships to fill. Uh-huh. We're going to do this too. Because again, at this point, we're getting information back out. We're not necessarily actually spending anything on the ship. We're doing a bunch of looping. We're calling some randoms. All this stuff is good. Like, no problems, right? Uh, draw new, try spawn and set new target. Um, this is where <laughs> this is where being too permissive can backfire. And I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, essentially, if this method returns false on clients because it can't spawn, but it returns true on hosts because it can, then we're going to have a divergence in code and we're going to desync in, our, in the first place. Uh, does that make sense? Because uh, a client should, if the client is doing the budgetary work but not actually spawning a ship, then it had better do every last bit of budgetary work and then not, and it's like, oh, I totally spawned the ships, guys. I totally did. You wouldn't believe how many ships I'm spawning. And then didn't really. Uh, and then the host goes, yeah, I actually spawned them. Here they are. Um, so in trying to make less of a desync, if we have a return method here that returns differently on the client than it does on the host, we just introduced a desync rather than solving one. As a reminder, what is the cost of a desync? The cost of a desync is uh, slightly wrong information on the client temporarily and some extra bandwidth. It's not the end of the world. In AI War 1, it was halt everything immediately. Clients must disconnect and reconnect. We're not even remotely in that state. We're constantly in a state of minor desync. It's Wolverine. It heals itself. However, we can reduce uh, weirdness and we can reduce uh, bandwidth usage by using these sort of strategies. Because, uh, well, you know, like why use more bandwidth than we have to? If you're playing intercontinentally, you'll appreciate it that we're you know, trying to minimize that. So uh, this is assigning to fire teams and doing a bunch of stuff that would be a humongous lie if we returned true on the client. Uh, I could try and refactor his code to make it okay, but it's really never going to be okay. So uh, given that, uh, this only has value if it is... Um, going to be used predictively, like the wave example I gave. Like, supposing I was to spend my budget, what would it be? Um, so, but we're not going to be able to use this predictively because the client would have to lie in order to do that, and that lie would cause more problems. Like, this code would have to be completely rewritten in order to be able to predict on a client what the budget spend would be and what the output would be. You could refactor it. I don't think anybody wants 
that that I know of. Nobody's told me that. I've never seen this before. Uh, but I mean, so far as I can tell from reading this code, that does not seem to be a goal of this code. So I was only showing it to you for illustrative purposes and I accidentally walked into a, a point of uh, here's where you can actually make things worse by trying to be overly helpful. <laughs> uh, the next question you may have is, should this method live in deep info? And the answer to that is, uh, maybe. We might move it there later. We might make it an extension method that is only in deep info, but we don't have to, and I'll show you why. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that happens in here in this particular class. This is a big old data structure that he's got here, this cost-based ship spawner. And in theory, there's some UI somewhere that could look at this and say, here's what we're looking at. And the here here's the information about what we could spawn. And the client and the host could both do that. And you can have some host only methods on here, it's no problem. How do you mark a method as host only? Well, in the past, they used to just have like underscore host only, and that would uh, you know kind of tip people off, but you can enforce it now. It is not possible for a client to call this properly. So uh, we're going to do this. Arkin, uh, sim, uh, Arkin host only sim context. So we're doing this now. The client can call this method still, but if they do, the context coming in is going to be null. If the host does it, the context will be not null. So in order to check, just doing this to limit it is not enough. It'll still run it on the client and it'll just error. So you'll know that you've got a problem because it'll be an error, but you won't find out about it to your multiplayer friends or uh, players who are playing your mod come and tell you, hey, this error is on the client. And you go, oh, shoot, I didn't put in the catch. So the second part that you have to do is say, if context equals null, then return whatever the default is. The default is clearly zero. We say, do not run on MP clients. Now, these other methods uh, down here, these ones theoretically could also independently be called. They're public. So I have to treat them as if they could be directly called, even if they're only ever called right now from this other method. I have no idea if that's true or not. But uh, even if they were, it's because they're public, I got to protect against the fact that they could be um, um, host only. So um, the, you know, the alternative would be to, to make those private you know, uh, so this is also public. So, all right, so I'm just gonna go through here, here. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. Cause again, when you get a lot of cutting and pasting in that, oops, turn false, turn false, um, add unit, we'll find out what's going on with that later. Uh, get spawn point. Uh, I don't see any reason why this can't be done anywhere because this is predictive. Um, draw new. Uh, you know, like, I don't see any reason why this can't be done anywhere. You know, like, what if this is predictive? I don't know. I don't know where this is called from. I don't necessarily care. Uh, it's not my job to know as being the translator right here. So uh, now I'm gonna scroll back up, find places where I, oh, okay. So um, there's an out method here that needs to be assigned before we return. So the return budget is what? Uh, return budget is set to, where is it set to something? Um, all right, so the return budget We'll set to that. I'm just going to be a little bit extra responsive here, just in case, because it's not my code. So I'm just going to be kind of courteous. Um, and then this almost certainly is the same. 
Oh, it's just through turn budget. All right. Uh, cool. So, um, all right. Now we've got fire team to assign into add unit. Uh, and it does not have an accessible extension method. Guess why? It's because I moved that into deep info. So, uh, because I do not want people to accidentally do a very host only thing on the client, uh, even, even by accident there. So at this point, I'm gonna have to split this. And I'm gonna have to move uh, this class this into being uh, an extension method over here. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're going to reload this project. And he's got a nice blank file here, so why not? And this is going to be, what's the name of this class? This class is uh, cost-based ship spawner. Okay, so this is going to be this actually is going to be cost-based ship spawner ex extensions. That's what we're here for. Um, public static. This. Oops. Public static class. This. Uh, all right. And then we are back to our data structures over here. Now, stuff's not going to. Uh, it's, it's not going to be very happy in the compiler for a while. It's just we're going to have to deal with that. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna drag over as little as I can, but we're gonna see what happens here. So the thing I know I must bring over is this. In order to bring this over as an extension method, uh, we're gonna have, um, let's see, is it this? I never can remember the, oops, static. Static, cost-based ship spawner, this, me, I think. Um, oh my. Hmm. This doesn't inherit from system, which doesn't help. That's why error is not found. Spawn next is null. And spawn next is null because it would be on me. So me that spawn x me that can spin me that all this stuff um so this is where you get into some kind of annoying uh things you'll notice that this add unit still is failing and i'll show you why in a second this is not a proper deep info yet so, you know, could just move the entire class over, but I don't know if anything in um, base info depends on this. The smart move will be to find that out before I do all this. Um, but I figured I would show you like the nature of doing an extension method. Now, of course, this all depends on these things being, uh, you know, public as well, uh, because if these methods aren't public, we've got a problem, or uh, these properties aren't public, and sometimes it's, you know, not good to make it public uh, because you don't want people accidentally messing with it in the wrong way, you know? So in this particular case, what are we missing from this picture? Uh, AMU is, wanting to look at the Arkin external stuff. So I'm going to need to put in a reference to the reliable DLL storage, Arkin DLLs, Arkin AIOR external deep processing code.dll. If you try and get cute and add that reference also to the main project, the game will reject your DLL and throw errors when you, uh, um, when you try and load it. Uh, don't, mess around with it because don't try and bypass my stuff. It's there for a reason. It's there for your protection as a modder. 
so that you don't have multiplayer players complaining to you weeks or months from now is to save you work. So if I made it a pain in the rear to initially set up, that was not because I find it amusing. I promise. Always set copy local to false. The specific version doesn't matter. I'm going to do a save all again. Uh, I should be able to look in here now and see that, yes, uh, not that. Uh, this is a relative path, not an absolute one, so it'll work on other people's computers, in other words. So if you have downloaded the new version of AI War after this has come out uh, on Steam, then you can open this right up on your machine, assuming you have Visual Studio installed, and it would work just exactly like what I've got going on here. So now, add unit should appear. Either that, or I have changed something unexpected. Let's find out what's going on. I don't remember. Uh, so, um, Let's just search for add unit. Deep info. Oh, 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 oh. That's what's going on. Right, 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 right. Oh my, that's a whole topic on its own. All right. Okay, I'm gonna show you this as a little sidebar in the middle of this other giant sidebar. Um, Fireteam specifically have what is I'm calling honorary deep info. And that means it's not a deep proofed. It's not in a sub DLL. This has a big long teaching moment that explains why. This should be as clear as I possibly could explain it to you in words right now on the video. Uh, I am not going to rehash that. Uh, if you have questions, ask me on Discord and... Um, you know, I, I would be happy to, you know, update documentation further in the uh, thing. At any rate, the bottom line is this still needs to be in the deep info class. If you call fireteam.deepinfo.addunit on from a base info class, it's not possible for me to make the code yell at you which I am regretful of because it really, really should yell at you. Uh, so yell at yourself for me, if you would. Um, this basically just shows that it's the right call, that this needs to exist here, even though it's not an extension method. Possibly the entire cost-based ship spawner extensions should be moved over. I will evaluate that now. Um, now, unfortunately, I may not be able to know because this may not really be used as part of AMU. This may be used by mods that depend on it. And in fact, that is the case. This is not used anywhere in AMU. So I'm gonna do something else. I'm going to open up Devourer Chrysalis, which is the most recent of his mods, really. Um, now this is, going to have to be converted as well and the initial process is going to be very very similar to AMU however AMU must be ported before this is going to be uh, possible to port so we're going to look for cost-based ship spawners and I'm going to determine what needs to happen okay so we've got two of these and these are being serialized well that's interesting are they really though I think that's a lie I think that serialized data and ser non-serialized data is not being differentiated. Oh no, it's not a lie. I'm just silly. Uh, well, am I silly? This is host only. This is host only as well. So this is a good example of um, the serialized info was marked but there's no point where it started marking the non-serialized, which I suspect exists. I think this might be non-serialized, but I don't know. I don't even know if you can serialize these things. Do these things serialize? Over here, let's see. Um, let's just look at it in the Class Explorer. I 
throat suddenly feels very raw. So cost based ship spawner. Uh, I don't see anything up oh, serialized planet and faction serialized too. All right, that serializes all right. All right, okay. So we have two choices at this point. And this is where it's helpful to know the, um, you know, to be the author of the thing in question. Should this be later on the devout chrysalis devourers deep data and only serialized for the host, which means it goes into the save game on disk, but it never goes across the network that would save bandwidth. Uh, or should it be on the base info and be passed around on the network as well and be visible to the client? Now, that's a philosophical question, but not really. Uh, should it be? Well, how do we know? The reason we know is if it's going to affect client decisions and thus cause a desync, or if it's going to affect the UI in any way. So if this information is ever made public, uh, like, like you can hover over the, informa the information on the Devourer Chrysalis like as a regular player and say, oh, it's coming up with this soon, then you know that this should be part of um, base info. Uh, what I'm seeing at the moment is that uh, this looks like this sort of data that if we're going to serialize it, um, that this should serialize only on the host. That'll make the save games a little bit bigger, but it'll make the network save, not bigger than they already are, but I mean like versus not serializing at all, uh, which in our base classes, none of the ones we have actually serialize any deep info, which is not to say you can't. This is a great example of where you might want to serialize one, where you've got some, uh, not proprietary, but like private information to a faction that the client doesn't look at, the client can never possibly see. You might want to see it on debug output, but you can do that on the host only or on single player only because it's debug output. So why bother sending that information across the wire to the client when it'll never ever be relevant in any non-debug scenario from their point of view? Um, honestly, there's probably some data like that that I should move from base info in the main game to deep info if I truly want to optimize every tiny bit and byte of data. You know, like that, that probably would be a good move. Uh, I had my hands full as enough as it was. Uh, we're still in a save game breaking sort of mode right now, so I could go back and do that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's truly relevant in the base game, though, uh, to be honest. So uh, my conclusion, based on looking at this and what this does, this looks like totally internal stuff. This is a Sir Limbo dis decision in the end. I can't make that call for him. Uh, I'm going to temporarily, for purposes of this video, and after I've checked in stuff, uh, he can redo it. But um, instead of making cost-based ship spawner extensions, this should just be cost-based uh, ship spawner. So in order to do that, uh, personally, I feel like um, we could use, so that's now returned. Uh, we have our here it is cost based ship spawner you know by putting the so AMU is meant to be for modders right Sir Lembo is creating this for modders I mean, we want to encourage other people who are modding using his framework in the right direction as well and by putting this in his version of deep info that actually will send a pretty strong message of, hey, this is not to be necessarily showing around. Like, it's just for internal decision making, 
don't bother your clients with that. Don't don't send that much bandwidth. Because um, I think there was some stuff being serialized by string, which is fine when you're talking about disk, but not my favorite when you're talking about the network. So we'll do this, we'll make a folder called uh, data structures. And we will drag this in here and we will name this cost based ship spawner. I have collapsed the class here. We'll move this over to here. This probably needs all the same using statements as the other one. I think look, looks like all it's missing is a system really anyway. So fine. Alrighty. Now at this point, uh, all we have to do is add dot deep info and dot deep info. Now spawn entity return null if client. I don't know why that's erroring. Uh, doesn't really matter. We'll find out some other time. It's outside of the scope of what we're really trying to do here. What I'm trying to impart is the non-philosophical thought process behind where things could go. It's not a matter of philosophy. You can come up with an exact, correct answer concretely of should this be in base info or should this be in deep info based on your goals um, and how you want your data to be used and, you know, all that sort of thing. You know, the, the more data that we send to the clients, the more room there is for stuff to get wrong, too. So that also is true. If there's a bunch of internal AI decision-making stuff that exists uh, that does need to be serialized for any number of good reasons, uh, yeah, don't bug the client with that. Don't, don't tell them about that at all. Like, why are we sending that to the client? That's too much information. Uh, they don't need to know, literally, in every possible sense of the word. It's not relevant and it's mildly wasteful. So, okay. So we've got a self-organizing list that does some stuff and has an error somewhere. Nope, that's in rollups. Error, oh my, several in rollups here. All right, so it's, this is just a matter of more of the arc and sim context thing. So we could do a search in general for arc and sim context, and we're gonna find out the, that we've got 104 of these that are, you know, uh, Sim any Arkin. Uh, so if you want it to be client or host, then you can do that. Uh, if you want it to be host only, you can do this. Or if you want it to be anything, you can be this. If you make it this one, you can't call into it from a host only uh, method. And there's actually a good reason for that. It's not whimsy. Uh, it prevents you from mixing your scopes incorrectly. So if something is client or host, it's part of that part of the sim, uh, that means it's part of that part of the sim. Like it's uh, it's not meant to be called from long range planning, for instance. Um, and uh, it's not a utility method that can be called from anywhere. It's apparently something that we wanna run on the sim only for some reason. That's what you just declared, you said, you wanted it to run only as part of the simulation for everybody. This is an everybody thing. This is a, we don't care. And this is a host only. So uh, if you make it uh, this, this is saying, this is sim only. Don't be coming to me from the long range planning thread for some reason. So um, that's what goes on with that. So we've got, um, some danger of paths and things. Again, these are these are the sort of things that uh, we can easily say, yeah, I don't care who's who's checking this, like a client or host, that's valid anybody. Set entity path, hmm, that sounds like a host only thing to me. Uh, so, you know, it's Arkin. So it's really easy to keep the, just Arkin H and then keep the other one on control V. So this one, get all planets nearby that are owned but not owned. Yeah, that's uh, anybody. Go for it. Knock yourself out, anybody. Um, closest warp point or null? Uh, yeah, like 
anybody, this is a utility method. Anybody who wants to find that information should be able to. I could see applications for that on a client. Add ship to grant list. Uh-uh. Uh, that is a host only sort of a thing. You must be a host pass. What have I forgotten to do here? Door the Explorer moment. Conte if context. And where else did I forget to do that? Um, I did not do that here. So it would have run and then errored. And this just calls this, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my... Essentially, I use Notepad like I'm using a little uh, scratch sheet. Uh, I don't need to compile. I just need to search for this. So I've got um, 101 of these. And yeah, you're going to have to look at them one by one. And that's a bummer in some respects, but it doesn't take too, too long. Uh, and I did that on purpose because they need to be evaluated. There's no way to know until you actually look at it. Uh, oh, I need to look for arc and sim context, whole word only. So, you know, uh, you know, this is host only, uh, you know, so we can go around and around on this for a while, but, uh, you know, this is going to be pretty repetitive and I don't necessarily feel like um, doing all of this right this second because uh, this has been my last three weeks. It's really boring, uh, I got to say. Uh, the draw entity types here. Uh, that is the sort of thing you could do anywhere. Like, it could be valid to draw anywhere. And so when I put the any status on there, then the one that was complaining stops complaining. So, okay, let's move on. Uh, so we've got AMU utils. All right, we've got a lot of stuff in here. We've got a lot of faction logic. I predict AMU utils is going to need to be split. If it's split, it can't exist the way that it is now. Uh, so you're going to have one of two things. This is a Sir Limbo dis decision. There's either going to be AMU utils and AMU deep utils, and they're two different classes, and people need to remember which one it is. You can choose to do that, or you can do it this way. Uh, and I honestly don't care either way. It works either way. So fire teams, we have... Uh, Actually, I did split that one that way, I think. Um, did I? Mm, yeah, I did. Um, there is a, let's see, it's under helpers, I think. How did I do this? I'm going to look in deep info instead of just guessing. Uh, okay, so, right. Faction utility extension methods. It used to be that you could just call faction utility methods dot. Uh, where is this? Faction utility, faction ut. Right. So this is the part of faction utility methods that is in uh, our equivalent of base info. Uh, this used to be a static class with static methods, a Badger setup. It was originally Badger utility methods. Now I've converted it to being a singleton. And the reason I did that, uh, so everything, it can't be faction utility methods dot do the thing. It has to be faction utility methods dot instance dot do the thing. Why the difference? <clears throat> uh, because I wanted to have the ability to extend it. You cannot extend a static class. So in deep info, I have faction utility method extensions, static class with that name. And then I declare public static and this was a badger method. I just moved it over here. Helper underscore raid against king. This faction utility methods utility. It turns out I don't actually need to reference anything on in itself because it doesn't have much in the way of variables. It's just logic. But you still have to declare it. So um, 
And then we've got this one, divide ships among planets, and uh, you know, raid planet from list, raid specific planet. Uh, there's a bunch of methods in here, flush from there. So when you're so the end result seems to be from an end programmer point of view that when you are in deep info, faction utility methods dot instance has some more stuff, and it'll say extension method right next to it. So if I'm in here, I can do faction utility uh, methods dot instance dot. And when I scroll past these, uh, you'll see the ones here that uh, th when they have that little uh, down, double down, those are extensions. And when you click on it in IntelliSense, it'll show you this is an extension method. Um, and so I can see, oh yeah, these, these things were added. Um, helper raid specific planet apparently it was not for some reason. Uh, I th I think I remember why that was. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, so AMU utils it can stay static and it can have a sibling called AMU deep utils or whatever the name would be. Uh, but or it can uh, move all of these. No longer static, or well, it's not a static class right now, but anyway, uh, no longer static methods on the class make them instance uh, and make there be a singleton pattern and extend away. So one of those two things will happen. That's not my call. Um, all right, we've got some more stuff here. We've got some stuff for serializing. I mean, that definitely is going to stay in base info. That's super duper uh, um, useful. Okay, here's another thing that's missing, and I'll tell you why. So uh, there's no longer an add squad primary key ID neg1 to positive. Why? Because we never have any squads with zero. So uh, I made it so that add, add squad primary cure primary key ID pause def zero. We already didn't have any squads with ID zero. They start at one. And so we can save one bit. Yes, it's one bit, but we're saving it all over the place by only using this sort of method. So instead of sending a negative one, we send a zero. If it encounters a negative one, I believe it corrects it without fussing at you. Let me make sure that's actually the case and I can tell you correctly. Um, oh, that's not in here. That's in core. Uh, in core, we have this extension method here, right? So if you pass in a negative one, it goes, you meant zero. It's okay. And it sends zero. Now you're going to get a zero out, not a negative one. So if you wrote code saying, hey, if the primary key is negative, negative one, then do this. Otherwise, we assume it's valid. You need to say if the primary key is one. Uh, but honestly, uh, we had a mix before of some places said zero, some places said one, and that's no good uh, for reasons that hopefully are kind of obvious. Uh, if you can't know whether something's valid or not, if it's a zero or a negative one, you're checking against two different things. Um, code gets confusing. Is zero okay or what is, you know is there a special meaning to negative you know you don't want any of that <laughs> so that's that's why uh so it reads quad primary key and um you know so we just get some uh general replacements there um i'm not expecting a whole lot of that sort of thing but i can obviously just go in and i'm saying i'm gonna do that ah, no Replace that, match case, match whole word. It doesn't really matter. Um, there was nothing else to do. These are the only two places because he was wrappering it. So not, not worth global replacement. Let's talk about the faction. We have the executor fake faction here, which I don't want. Now there's two parts to it. There's one part that is actually... Um, actually a faction that needs to be added to come and fight the devourer chrysalis now that i do want makes total sense that should be added when the devourer chrysalis is added i'll show you how to do that 
based on the XML that we have. So uh, I'm going to look at Templars here. So Templar, I'm not matching case, which is good because I didn't type it with case. So uh, Templars are somebody that hates the Necromancer. And so uh, I need to look in the faction definitions. So here we can see uh, they're called the Templars and their faction. And we add a singleton of these when any of these other factions are present. And then we make a list. And right now the list is just Necromancer. Um, but if we wanted it to be several, then we could then we could do that. Um, if we wanted it to be the other way around, if we needed somebody else to say, hey, uh, whenever I'm added, um, add these other factions also. Uh, I don't have a mechanism for that right now, but I could make one. So if somebody needs that, then, then just ask and I'll make that. Um, so for his like, anti-devour chrysalis AI thing, um, that needs to be set up like the Templar. The other parts of this that are the executor fake faction that just always gets added, always, 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 that's what I made the world data for. Um, and I believe it has enough functionality to do everything that he needs it to. Uh, I don't know for sure, but that was the goal. So, Um, there was a thing called game program is about to reload external XML and similar. I no longer have that because it's not super relevant. Uh, there are too many other context shifts that matter more. So when we have a, um, so let's go ahead and make a thing. Uh, this is going to be the skeleton of a thing, but, um, let's call this, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like naming his stuff for him, but, um, let's call this AMU central, uh, AMU central. We'll just call it AMU central. Uh, I don't feel like, um, name, or, yeah, public class. AMU central, and this is going to inherit from external world base info. And so using system, uh, okay. So at this point now it wants some things and we didn't provide them. We just hit implement abstract class, um, cool. And now these things exist. They're all out of order though. Sometimes it's easier to just copy it from uh, another location. Um, are we going to be serializing anything? I don't know. Uh, are we going to do some notifications? Yes, we talked about that in a prior video. Should I be in use? If AMU is installed, probably. Um, if AMU is uh, installed and enabled, then yeah. Uh, clear all my data for quit to main menu or before new map. There's the ticket. So uh, that would be kind of the equivalent of this because that's why I got rid of game programs about to reload external XML and similar. That's not relevant. What's relevant is when we're about to start a new context, um, when we're about to start a new game, we need to clean up. It's time to clean up because uh, this is pooled. And uh, when I originally wrote this other thing, things weren't pooled. We just need to pull some fresh data from XML. So uh, let's let's uh, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. global import rollup holder. This seems to have a lot of the data that we would want to put over here. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so before this was setting those to false, I understand now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these to false from here. 
Uh, this is essentially our cleanup, um, but it's not called that in the case of the world stuff. We were looking at factions and squads. I don't think we actually looked at squads, but it's the same on squads. All right. Um, and I'm going to have the same note here because a reload slash overwrite. That's for that. We can get rid of this now. One less error. Um, this does not have an analog. This does not have an analog. We're not going to mess with that. Um, initialize settings. Always do base. All right. This is a great example of Sir Limbo through uh, naming, uh, trusting himself to make sure that uh, this gets called. This is not how I would do this. If it were me at this point, I would do this. You take that off and uh, you have initialized settings. Uh, and if you want to have it be called initialized settings, always do base, you know, fine. But then um, this would need to be an abstract method class, which I don't know what class this is in. Yes, it's in, a, it's in an abstract class. Uh, it, see, I'm not that trusting. That's the thing. That's where we come come down to that's what it comes down to is that i am not that trusting so uh, where did it get to i'm looking for this so i would then say um we're gonna have a protected because we don't want somebody outside of this class accidentally calling in here we'll say virtual you could say abstract i would be tempted to say abstract honestly why virtual versus abstract? Well, virtual is optional. You can override it. Virtual also is less efficient. Abstract fills in something that was not there and doesn't require a virtual table, table lookup. Uh, the virtual methods uh, require almost like twice the processing to call into them. If they're done infrequently, as an initialization is, it doesn't matter. You may as well make it virtual. It's, I mean, it's so little performance. But the second part of making it abstract is you force people to think about it. Do I have something to initialize? I probably should. Um, and so you can uh, say, you know, protected, abstract, uh, internal settings, always do base, inner. I don't know. What are we calling? Um, and it needs to have an actual return type, void. And then uh, then it's not only that I'm not trusting, because I'm not, uh, but also uh, this enforces order. Uh, I knew, and so as, a, as a, another programmer, if I come along and see this initialize settings, always do base. Okay, I think he means that he wants me to do this. All right. Does it matter if I do it at the start or the end of my method? I don't know. Probably doesn't matter. But if it did matter, I'm able to control that. And so uh, at this point, I'm enforcing exactly what he was enforcing, but I'm calling this first, and then this comes after. And uh, then... Uh, Anybody else who's got initialized settings, always do base. Uh, uh, we're no longer overriding that. We're overriding, thi overriding this, and it's protected. And um, if I was worried about something else potentially overriding this, then this is what I would do. I would seal it so nobody else can override my overridden thing. But if I want to provide an option for even more initialization down the line here, then this is what I would do. And I'm not saying this is what I would do like lightly. This is what I have done all throughout the uh, inheritance chain that you see in the Arkin uh, thing. This is all over the place in our stuff. Inner, 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 I don't know. Um, this is, I don't, because this isn't my code, I don't know what this is, but, um, at this point now, there is a, that's not how that goes. Now there's a virtual thing. Do I, do I want to force them to do it again? Uh, actually, yeah, probably. Because they're not having to think about anything right now. Uh, I 
Yeah. So, uh, because because that's ah, geez, what the heck did I do? Because um, that's the crux of it is we want anybody who's designing a faction with this to consider: do I have do I have settings to do it? Even if they inherit from the smart fire team powered version, we want them to still think about it. So now we have a chain with no trust. I sealed this one, which means anybody who tries to override this will fail and nobody can override uh, this other one to begin with. Uh, this one here, um, enter, protected, don't need that. We don't have to trust the end programmer. It's really tempting to trust the end programmer when you think of yourself as the end programmer. But if you think of yourself as not having the information, that's when you you want to not be trusting, even of yourself. I've forgotten so many things. It's <laughs> it, that I shouldn't trust myself to remember three years from now. Oh yeah, make sure you call base and do it first, please. Um, you know, so that is how I would rewrite that as just a minor thing uh, using sealed and using abstract, possibly choosing virtual if you don't want to force them to think about it, but giving them the option. Uh, so this smart faction implementation base, uh, this is this is the deep info, right? So this is inheriting from base special faction right now. This is really going to be um, external uh, faction deep info and it's going to be the deep info root because that's the one that has some implementation stuff on it so uh, just as a reminder I'm going to search not in that that's core search in this uh, so okay so let's take a look at uh, these so we've got a uh, like dark spire uh, faction deep info it's it's gonna require us to have um, a base version and this smart faction implementation base that's confusing we're gonna have to rename that uh, we're gonna have to smart faction implementation core why not base because it is base uh, because base info versus deep info trumps any of the other stuff we need to understand is this supposed to be base info is this supposed to be deep info ah this is a core a lower down version of this particular class but you know okay we're going to rename this class too so we've got smart faction implementation core we have a couple of versions here um and uh Here again, these should, in my opinion, one man's opinion, these should be in their own own files at this point, just because it aids in readability uh, and exploring. Like you, you, you learn nothing by looking at this solution explorer. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize in a like negative way. Uh, AMU is really well designed, and when you go in and you're using it as a DLL. I and mean, what do you care? All of the stuff from a DLL shows up by just typing .amu do utils and all that stuff. It's really easy to use, but not necessarily to extend, which I know Sir Limbo is probably not thinking about other people contributing to AMU, but what if, you know? Like what if somebody wants to, or what if somebody wants to learn how to take over AMU if he gets bored of it, what if? somebody wants to learn how to make their own version of AMU. Uh, those considerations deserve some, some time, uh, in my opinion. Um, and that's something I've been trying to work towards more with the, this work in general. Um, so we're gonna need to have a um, smart faction implementation, uh, oopsies, see? This is where we get into the, um, the many kind of foibles of stuff, right? So what is all this? So we've got a cached faction list. We've got some other stuff here. We've got a faction, some stuff, some stuff, some stuff, some stuff. Um, 
I don't know where these are going to belong. Um, and I don't want to make endless extra files for him right now. I would put each of these things in a uh, in its own thing, but that's just me. So right now I'm going to put faction specific debug, not that faction specific debug settings. That's yes. And in this, and this really needs to have system in here. I'm going to move this to also have that so that we go ahead and have that. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to take all of these things and I'm going to put these in here because I have a very strong feeling, not certain, I have a very strong feeling that these are probably going to need to live in base. And this is probably going to need to be a reference to the base version, not the deep version. So, but I don't know for sure and things can move back and forth. It's not the end of the world. So if something needs to move later, and uh, that's fine. I, I just was guessed, guessed wrong. But this is one of the reasons why uh, I don't want to um, act all knowing about somebody else's um, code and make too many decisions for them. Again, that seems like the sort of thing that goes in um, base info. But if it moves back to deep, then I just guessed wrong. So all these things moved on over. Um, and gradually, you know, compiler issue errors and stuff start going down. And then um, I, I predict confusion when there's not separation of files in this way. Um, all right. And this is named improperly still, but that's okay. And also we don't need the regions once we have them in their own files because we don't need to collapse, not the outer regions, because we don't have to collapse them. And if I come back in here now, so this also uses system.threading. So this should use that. And now we can just correct this little bit here. We're gonna get lots and lots more compiler errors temporarily. Uh, you know, they, they come and they go. <laughs> now, this isn't the name, this can't be the name. Uh, this is, um, this really should be uh, deep info root. I'll, I'll say root rather than core. All right, now those are all done. Rename the file. This becomes, uh, oh, you know what? It says implementation there. We can get that out of there. Uh, deep info root. I'll correct the other after this. Um, removing the term faction implementation and just making it faction deep info or base info can help differentiate and not be so darn wordy. Right. All right. Uh, are you kidding me? Did I... Did I get this renamed properly or not? I did. Okay, good. All right. So um, now on this side, I'm going to need two classes um, because these are going to be used by others later. Now, these are not going to do some of the things that um, well, we'll talk about that in a second, actually, because they, they will and they won't. <laughs> uh, all right. And then smart faction, smart fire team faction, base. Uh, start renaming the wrong one. Well, whatever. Okay. So...
public class. Um, it's easier to copy paste because it'll put it in the right order. So I'm going to go to my handy handy missing factions. Um, it really is nice having um, uh, that. So this and oops. right yep that's right okay um now some of these things are the sort of things that we're going to want child factions to deal with um so I'm not going to, well, okay. I, I, oh my God. So let's look on here. Serialization. Serializing its allegiance. All right, we already do that as part of the central config. Um, he's got a wrapper around it, which is nice, but... Uh, um, it's, you know, like there's two competing architectures now. Um, and you can store that a second time, but it's maybe not, wouldn't be my first choice. Um, if you want to serialize this sort of thing, then I would suggest doing an override. Well, obviously you have to on there. And I believe these are protected and it should be serialized faction to because I'm doing exactly uh, the sort of um, um, non-trusting overriding of stuff as I was uh, describing before to serialize from no suitable method so when you're not sure about that deserialize faction into self it is public that's right of course it's public eh right now Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Okay. Faction into self. Fine. Uh, and at this point, like again, I don't trust anybody, not even me, and so uh. uh protected abstract um all right um sub faction to and deserialize sub faction into self and this is our from and we do this afterwards. The order 100%, 1000% matters when it comes to serialization. This is a great example of why you can't trust people necessarily. Or, or, or why would you put that on them? He didn't, to be fair. Uh, so again, not a criticism. I'm not trying to like lay into somebody. But as an example in general, here in serialization, order is everything. Uh, it must be serialized and deserialized in exactly the same order. And um, if you, the more choices you give the end programmer, the more chances you give them to make a mistake. When it's stuff that's trivial, like do I need to consult the, the core code to know that what I'm doing is not going to cause, you know, pink lightning and elephants, you know? Uh, so, uh, it's not just a matter of trust. It's not just a matter of like, you know, paranoia, don't touch my cheese or something. Like I, I actually want as much freedom as possible for everybody all the time. Whoa, that's a, <laughs> that was an infinite loop right there. Um, at any rate, uh, however, um, when there's trivial decisions that can uh, 
like majorly negatively, you know, affect things. I don't like putting those near them. It's kind of like that far side comic with the joke where it's like the, you know, don't fiddle with the switches on your sweet little seat, little Timmy. And, you know, and like what's, what sort of switches are going to be on the, 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 uh, the seat of a child, like, they're not going to be able to hurt anything. They're going to lean the seat back, turn a light or something. But then, you know, in the Far Side comic, it's like wings fall off as the switch there. And it's hilarious because it's like, of course, nobody would put a switch like that where a child can reach it or an adult can reach it. Who would put a switch like that where the pilot can reach it? You know, like that's not that's not a thing you make available. Uh, and that's the mindset that I have when it comes to subclasses is you don't put a wings fall off switch. Um, it's sort of comes down to not accidentally booby trapping people as much as it does to not trusting them to know it. Cause I don't expect me from two years to remember all of the things that I remember very well right now from the last three weeks. Um, uh, and obviously, even in this video, you've seen some things where I was like, oh, Ark in Sim context doesn't exist anymore? Why doesn't that exist? Oh, that's right. There's a whole important, super uh, relevant reason why that doesn't exist anymore and why it should be used a certain way. Um, but I didn't remember until something prompted me to. If I had left Ark in Sim context alone, and left that as like the let's say like the the most permissive any class version then when i came into amu uh i would have seen arc and sim context i go yep that checks out and we would have had the same sort of problems that we always had with not having certain things marked as host only and return null if context is null there would have been no mental trigger for me to do that so i would have just walked through and introduced more desyncs. So I don't trust me. That's what I'm saying is like, I don't trust anybody, not even me, because who can hold that much information in their head? You shouldn't have to. Good architecture protects itself while expressing freedom. It, you know, it's the progressive sandboxes, right? So uh, that's my soapbox. But um, if you structure your own code that way, uh, then you and others are also much less likely to uh, accidentally sabotage yourself. Um, and because, uh, you know, inevitably somebody else is going to want to join in at some point on something. That almost always seems to be the way. So, uh, yeah. So at this point, uh, we have the basics of a faction going. We don't have a clear method on here. You'll notice that since this is an abstract class, it's not required to do the things that are otherwise normally required. Its children are, but it is not. So um, that means it's up to us to come in and say, uh, here are the things that we want to do. Now, this is a thing we don't want to do right here. The unique name for faction to avoid threat context? Mm-mm, pass that buck. That is a decision for someone else. However, here's one, two, that we can take. And the minimum seconds between long range plannings, again, pass that buck, that's for the end class or for a group of classes, not for a generalized like workhorse like we've got here. These parts, we're taking over. Uh, okay, so constructor. We don't get a constructor. Uh, we don't know if that's coming or what's going on. Um, we're going to do that in cleanup instead because cleanup means we're coming out to play. <laughs> uh, or, you know, actually, that means we're going away from playing. So, honestly, we're going to do that in here. This is better constructor. Um, we have a base info. I'm going to make this private. The reason I'm making this private is because we want to have a reference to smart faction uh, base info root for ourselves here that will let this class talk about it. But in the classes that come after this, we're going to want them to also 
have their own reference at their level. So in other words, um, at the smart faction deep info root level, we want to be able to talk to its equivalent base info. At the smart faction deep info faction fire team one, we want it to be able to talk to its equivalent. At the devour chrysalis level, we want it to be able to talk to the devour chrysalis one. So we want these all to be private. Now, in order to ensure nobody screws me, <laughs> excuse me, I need to make this sealed uh, because this must happen. Both of these things, clearly. And I don't trust anybody, not even me. So what do we do now? We have, you know what we have. And I make it protected so that when we look at this class from the outside, it doesn't look like insane pants. So we have um, protected abstract void uh, do any sub initialization logic or inner you pick. Um, and we're going to force people to think about that. Now, unfortunately, because we have, and we're going to do the same thing with cleanup, uh, we're going to seal it. And we're going to have a uh, sealed. Um, and we're going to call sub cleanup. Uh, you can see this code, this sort of code in our normal uh, things as well. Now we've got a hierarchy going here. The smart fire team thing uh, inherits from the other. So at this point, we need a base one of this. And this one needs to be a sealed version of sub. And we need a sub sub. And this needs to be protected. Whoopsies. Protected. Um, and this needs to be sub. And we need to have a sub sub, which is a little bit weird, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, that could obviously be renamed, but um, uh, so did I not make a fire team fire team to faction base info group? Are we missing that? Oh, we are. That's what's going on. Okay. Yep. Right. Uh, this looks like this. Um, we're gonna have the same sort of inheritance things going on over here. Uh, the reason I didn't make that is because this inherits from this, and this is called. And so here we have serialized, not serialized. We don't get a constructor. Well, we do actually. We have to have one, and we may as well have it called cleanup. Actually, uh, there's uh, this we'll call cleanup on the root, which is good. Um, so here we seal it. We're going to seal this. We don't need to seal these because we're not doing it. We're not doing this either. Um, so I'm just going to take these off because I don't think we're going to do this. But if we did want to, then we would do it the other way. And again, I'm taking these off because we don't seem to be doing any of that. Uh, and honestly, we don't have anything to clean up yet at the moment either. So uh, I'm going to call cleanup from in here on the smart faction base info root, but um, this, wait, hmm? right, it doesn't implement these. Um, right, so on these, right, 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 of course. So on these, you have two choices. You can, you just override them like this and don't put anything in them. I forget, oh, no, you just make this abstract. The heck, duh. Yeah, just make it abstract, and then you do this, and we make this abstract as well. And again, we don't have anything to do, and we don't need to think about what's going on. Like if there's stuff we fill in, then we're gonna do it with the sub sub and all that. We have a connection across uh, on this level, which is the fire team one which inherits from this guy which also has a link across and then on whatever child of that which is assumedly uh, devour chrysalis and so on 
they will have a link across and everything is protected. Everything's able to talk easily and efficiently. Uh, things get moved around to the files they need to be in, which I haven't even started to do, partially because we have some weird things going on in here, which are just a little bit different. Um, and that is the generality of what we do. And unfortunately, I have to go pick up my dog like now. Uh, I will show a little bit of the global command thing uh, in another video, uh, the world logic stuff later. But honestly, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to take, we're going to, um, did I not already? Um, I made a AMU central. It inherits from this, um, get identifier from error messages. We just return something for, for it to say. Um, but basically the stuff that's on the fake executor faction that doesn't really need to be on a faction because it's not really faction related, that just all moves into this file. We need an XML class referencing this. You've seen how to do that in the base uh, class in I think the last video. So really this is to the point where like this is structurally what's going on. Like hopefully it makes sense at a structural level, especially when you combine it with looking at our existing uh, files in uh, uh, the core uh, in the in the main game. Uh, if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. I will also be converting over uh, civilian industries. I will probably show a bit more of that because it's a very conventional uh, set of classes. So there's some different stuff I can show you in there. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave it close to here in AMU, which I know I made it. I just came in and made a big mess. But what have we accomplished at this point? We've got two projects. They reference things properly. Uh, some of the stuff has been moved into proper locations. Other parts have not. The general sketch of what the architecture should be has been put in there by myself. Um, I have some suggestions that I've made on how things should be organized. We need to start getting some of this stuff into folders in my opinion, but that is uh, something that is a modern discretion. And uh, we have the overall like obvious places to put things and the obvious decision points of like, is this a host only thing? Is this a client only thing? How does the context work? All of that. So we've accomplished a lot, but there's still a lot to do. You can see why it's been 12 hour days for three weeks straight. Uh, after even coming up with the framework. So um, thank you for watching.